My brothers and sisters, isn't that a lovely opening hymn? The closeness of God to us, which is expressing. My brothers and sisters, sisters, we've gathered this afternoon, it's gone to 12 o'clock, for the funeral mass for the late Brendan Kennelly. So on behalf of all gathered, on behalf of the parish at large, and indeed for the surrounding parishes as well, and Father, on behalf of Father Philip here beside me, and to extend our sympathies to all the family and to the near relatives at this particularly sad time for them. But it also marks a homecoming. Brendan's life is now complete, and the full story has been told. And he's gone today now to Almighty God. And in this Mass, we're praying for his soul, asking Almighty God to forgive him all his human imperfections and to count among the saints in glory. And also we're praying, I think it more appropriately, appropriate enough as well, for all the family members who have gone before him to Almighty God. We remember all of them in a special way today and commend their souls to the care of the Almighty. We're also praying for the families themselves, that they, in these difficult times for them, that they will be consoled by the nearness of God as expressed in the opening hymn just now. Now also here today, my brothers and sisters, we have the aide de camp of President Higgins and his wife Sabina here with us uh, to join the family and bring the condolences of the President and his wife. And also, by extension, he's representing all the civic bodies up and down the country who would love to send their uh, condolences and, and their wishes to all the family on this particular occasion. We know we're in a difficult time and the restrictions of all kinds have, have to be imposed and so on, but we're getting it through together. So we're ready now today, then, today then to pray to Almighty God with his presence and we ask for the warmth of God to be with us on all kinds of occasions, morning, noon and night, and particularly in times of stress, in times of loss, in times of sadness. So we begin, my brothers and sisters, in with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We're conscious of our own shortcomings as human beings and our own imperfections, and we turn to Almighty God knowing that he is a God of mercy and of love, and so we, we invite his love and his mercy into our being. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We turn to God then in the opening prayer. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant, Brendan, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now the family have chosen the reading, so I ask everybody to sit. Now Mary will take the first reading from the letters to St. Paul. And then the, uh, the, we'll have the Sam, and then we'll have the... the um, the, the second, sorry, the first reading is from uh, Isaiah, rather, my mistake. The psalm is sung, Be Not Afraid, Mary takes the second reading, which is from uh, St. Paul's letter to the Romans. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die.
Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our own spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, we do so that we may be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory which is waiting for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are you, Lord, blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. Hallelujah. Let us all now stand to preach the gospel. The Lord be with you. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one's the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden and light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just sit for a few moments, please. <clears throat> These few moments after the liturgy of the Word is designed for some reflection and for prayer and also for a little relaxation. I don't like the word death. It's such a rough word. And in other languages, it is not equally, it is also unattractive. Oh God, think of the Latin word for death, Mars. The word sounds rough and a bit crude. And I think is unappetizing as an unopened oyster. Rough and rather ugly looking. So that's what I'm going to say about the word of death. And to look at things in a different perspective, I turn to the liturgy. Liturgy is simply what we're doing today, engaged in liturgy. It's public worship of God and involved with God in prayer and adoration, worship and thanksgiving and in praise. And I regard the liturgy as a kind of fruit tree why it gives us fruit that we can indulge upon or just look upon. And that fruit is mixed me or me metaphors, a fruit that we take into our very being, but it changes our, the structure, it changes the very furniture of our souls and of our minds. 
and why I turned this morning to the very open prayer of the Mass just a moment ago. Many of you may have missed it. But it speaks of saying, what does it say? It doesn't use the word of death. It says about your servant Brendan, who has fallen asleep in Christ. And that's a mouthful to express that reality that we'll all experience. Falling asleep in Christ. That's a far cry from losing the word of death. Now, when you think of it, falling asleep, there are such parallels between death and sleep, isn't there? We don't see ourselves falling asleep now that we see ourselves dying. It's the experience of it we have. And what did the poet, or what's his name, Shakespeare himself say about sleep? It knits up the ravel's sleeve of care. It's the most comforting experience of the lot, isn't it? That falling asleep is refreshing and what not. But in the liturgy, it goes further than just death compared with sleep. It goes further with saying, we're falling asleep in Christ. Often when people are talking about death, they say, like some people who are, let's say, uncomfortable with the word of death, they use other expressions like passing over or crossing over. And if you ask them, what does it mean to cross over? Are they going to where or to what? They just shrug their shoulders and twiddle their thumbs. They have no answer. Whereas in the Christian world, we talk about falling asleep in Christ. And that is quite a mouthful. But we also encounter that phrase at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, which says, through him, with him, and in him. And we're in Christ from our baptism. And to take a bit further, we're talking here about a personal relationship. So when we fall asleep in Christ, we'll experience Christ somewhere or other in faith while we walk this out. But then we're in, in the, death, the death experience, we're seeing him face to face. And there's another wonderful expression as well in the scriptures, talking about Jesus as being our advocate with the Father. So our first encounter, so to speak, after death, We'll be coming face to face with Christ, but seeing him as our advocate with the Father, through whom all mercies, let's say, come back to us then. So we're experiencing the face of Christ in our death, and also getting a taste of the mercy of God, which we will pray for Brendan, cleanses the person of all their sins. So it's a wonderful thought that it's all about life, isn't it? Because the final word for all of us is life, not death. Resurrected life, sharing the eternal life of God himself. And that is what is profound. Now to drift off a little bit. I have a rather fanciful suggestions. Because today we are burying both a poet, an academic, a scholar, and, and, and so forth. Now I have one fanciful suggestion. All scholars should, before they walk off the stage, get a big pa page of brown paper put all their books together, and then wrap all their books together, and then put a lovely, uh, let's say, a butcher string around them. Make them into a parcel. But here's what I'm serious. And then what would they put on a label on them? And what would that label be? Two words, safeguarding memory. Shouldn't that be the case that all of writers and academics, historians, playwrights the lot, what are they doing when they commit their material to the paper? They're trying to safeguard memory. And I think that is a powerful way of describing what's left behind after creative people, that their work should be seen as, as safeguarding memory. It already has happened the Bible. What's the Bible? A library of books. What does it do? It safeguards the memories of the, the Jewish people and the young Christian church, and all about Christ and what and what. The Bible itself is a book safeguarding memory. And of course, I should leave it, say as well, that when we do open the Bible, the very first page is what? A liturgical poem. It's a liturgical poem, the very first page. And rather than talking about God creating the world, a much more profound way of saying that God speaks creation. He speaks creation. He brings creation into being. And he's brought every single one of us into, into being as well. So God speaks creation. 
reminds me of then how Brendan, one of his phrases was, in the beginning was the word, from the beginning of St. John's Gospel. Now, my brothers and sisters, talking about memory, a safeguarding memory, take you back about 30 to 40 years ago, late Brendan had, in one of the Sunday newspapers, I think with a two-part interview with one of the journalists at the time, it was spread out over two Sundays, an interview with Brendan. And what I can remember from that, because I remember cutting it out, that keeping the two pages for, for years and years afterwards, I know what that today. But in the middle of that interview, he made a very important point. He just spoke about a memory. And the point he says, and he loved to memorize things and have no things off by a heart. And um, what did he say? Memorizing, he says, was an act of love. An act of love. Now you try to tell that to a 15 or 16 year old who are preparing for their junior search or their leaving search afterwards and all the telling stuff off by heart to tell them it's an act of love. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you're 15 or 16, it's all hard work. But I think as the years go by, when you can remember things, maybe little bits of knowledge and, and wisdom that come distilled from the poems and things like that, you appreciate then the, the gift of memory and the, and the wisdom that it passed on to, to us all. So that is one of the, 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 the things I can remember in the past of an interview with him. Perhaps, apart from Brendan's creative work, fundamentally for most of his work, he was a teacher. And there's one great phrase in the book of Daniel about teachers. And believe it or not, I got this bit of wisdom. Back in 1964, I think it was in the Christian Brothers School in Chile, after setting secondary school at the time, and the little brother O'Brien used to come around looking for recruits to the brothers. And he always he used to say to us, we had him a number of times, and he, was, he would say to us, if we became Christian brothers and became teachers, we would shine out like stars for all eternity. Because the teacher was supposed to be leading others in goodness and in, in virtue. You would find it in the book of Daniel. So all who have become te who have been teachers, and of course, who are the biggest teachers of the lot? Not those in the classroom, parents. Parents are the biggest teachers. And they bring their children to, to, the, to goodness and to virtue and what not. That's what they want the best for. And therefore, the, the, the scripture phrase in Daniel was, they shall shine out like stars for all eternity. So I'm sure that Brenda came across that phrase somewhere on the line. And perhaps they were asking Almighty God to realize it for him. Here, my brothers and sisters, at the altar, we have, we have a Mass here next Saturday and Sunday, our Harvest Thanksgiving occasion in the parish. And with the stuff already there behind the, the, the coffin. So, in a sense, today is a harvest time for Brendan. He's been harvested by God. And, count, and now we ask him to be counted among the saints in glory. And, you know, I came across years ago, I love the expression, it says that, teach us to have to answer heaven's roll call. Teachers too have to answer heaven's roll call. So we're asking then that his good soul be counted among the saints in glory and that his spirit will shine out forever. And please God for many years to come, those who get his books and his poems and, and other, other, let's say, lecture notes that he left behind, that people will draw strength from them because his was a singing voice a real singing voice. And of course, what was very distinctive was the Kerry accent. But should I even go further? I tell you, there's no such thing as the Kerry accent. There is a Kerry accent, and there are several Kerry accents within the county. So there's no one accent that you can say, that's the Kerry accent, it is not. We have several accidents with accents, accents within this county, excuse me, several of them. Just like they say in the, in the world, when people say to you, Science says such and such a thing. I said to them, there's no such thing as science. And the, and the act of thinking is the sciences. There's no central authority called science, but there are the sciences, which is more accurate. The same way, the accent, you can't say there is the Kerry accent. No, there are many Kerry accents. Brendan's was probably the nicest and the brightest and the most glorious. Who couldn't fail but fall in love with him? Of course, all the women loved him, you know, with a soft smile, the dimple, and the lovely soft voice. Coaxiorum, say no more. 
say no more. No, we're ready, my brothers and sisters, for the, uh, the prayers of the faithful. So those with the prayers of the faithful, please come forward now. <clears throat> God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. We pray for Brendan, who, after 85 years with us, is beginning his next journey beyond the confines of earthly constraints. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of Brendan, a son, brother, father, grandfather, uncle, colleague, and friend. Brendan understood the essence of love, and we pray that he will now rest peacefully in God's limitless love and mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Brendan always loved being among family, and we pray today he's enjoying the company of those he loved and was loved by, who have gone before him, especially his daughter, Doodle, his mother and father, Bridie and Tim, his brothers, Colm and John, may they rest in the internal peace of the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Brendan had an amazing capacity to connect with people and to form friendships uh, wherever he went. We pray today for all his family, friends and former colleagues who are grieving his passing and will miss his presence. May we all find comfort and joy in our memories of Brendan. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <clears throat> We pray for all those in the caring, nursing and medical professions who hold our loved ones and their families in times of greatest need, especially all the wonderful staff at Arasware and Nursing Home in Listowel County Kerry, who gave Brendan exceptional care, support and friendship over the past few years. We give thanks and pray for them and for all involved in the caring professions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Both as a teacher and a poet, Brendan displayed extraordinary generosity in fostering the talents and gifts of others. We pray to today for educators, artists and writers everywhere that they will have the courage and the commitment to their gift, generosity and the sharing of it and support in its receiving. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <clears throat> Throughout his life, Brendan recognised, supported and walked the voiceless, the imprisoned, the marginalised. Today we ask God's blessing for all those who feel alone, ignored and without a voice, that they will be heard and supported. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, these are some more prayers and petitions to you. We ask you to turn them into blessings. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we continue with the offertory. The gifts are now prepared, the bread and the wine which later in the Mass then during the course of the Eucharistic prayer will become for us the risen Saviour himself, truly present among us, Jesus the Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord receive the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all's holy church. Now the gifts, prayers, or the offerings. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Brendan, 
we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt his son, your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, to Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We now begin, we can all kneel at the stage. We'll pray now the Eucharistic prayer. And as we do so, we remind ourselves that we are the voice that speaks back to the creative God on behalf of everything that exists. So much of our world, of our universe is inert and lifeless. Yet we ourselves are privileged to put, put words into our mouths coming from our singing hearts to Almighty God. So let us join the choirs of angels in heaven and all the saints as we pray this particular prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make order, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and had willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Almost more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and a drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to the Felders worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Raymond, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Brendan, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We'll all stand now, my brothers and sisters. And in the ancient tongue, we we'll sing now the Arnaher. Oh, 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy before me, protection in mind and body, and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am that worthy, just unto my roof, when I say the word, that my soul shall be healed. Let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Now, my brothers and sisters, it comes for the moment for reception of the Eucharist. Now, I'll take this sacrament down there. So come up there, the center, and if we could go down by the sides then, and you'll see it again. I'll do this side first of all, and then when we finish the doors, people from that side come up as well, and down by the sides. Thank you for your cooperation. Now, some of you may not wish to receive the Eucharist uh, physically, so, but if you want to come to the altar to receive a blessing on this occasion, just put your hands across your chest, and I'll know then what to do with you. So thanks for your co cooperation again.
begin by Brendan. <clears throat> begin again to the summoning birds, to the sight of light at the window. Begin to the roar of morning traffic all along Pembroke Road. Every beginning is a promise, born in light and dying in dark, determination and exaltation of springtime, flowering the way to work. Begin to the pageant of queuing girls, the arrogant loneliness of swans in the canal, <clears throat> bridges linking the past and future, old friends passing though with us still. Begin to the loneliness that cannot end, since it perhaps is what makes us begin. Begin to wonder at unknown faces, at crying birds in the sudden rain, at branches stark in the willing sunlight, at seagulls foraging for bread, at couples sharing a sunny secret alone together while making good. Though we live in a world that dreams of ending, that always seems about to give in, something that will not acknowledge conclusion insists that we forever begin. On a lighter note, what's it in heaven with having the likes of John B. Keane, uh, Brian McMahon at the one table for breakfast, throw into the mix of then Seamus Heaney, and then throw in Patrick Kavanagh. And then to wreck everything, Brendan Behan appears at the door. It would be a rather colourful scene Maybe there's a making of a play for somebody there, you know, to bring all those departed geniuses together in one play and have their voices together and uh, see what kind of rich tapestry they would throw up between them all. Each of them with their own consciousness, their own gifts, their own wonders that are given to the world. And it tells us, we as a people, we're so fortunate have so many creative writers in our, in our catalogues, you know, and some of them, as they are in the valued file, and of course others are probably in the general catalogue, but you know, they enrich people's lives. The whole world of the arts is so important to everybody. Beauty, we're always perceiving it in nature, and we're perceiving nature, beauty too, in people, and that's the best kind of beauty the beauty we see in people. So, Brendan will be laid to rest now in this lockdown. Uh, too far from what has been buried today, there is a rusting gate, uh, not too far away, I won't say where, because some people might come at night time and steal the gate away, with a sentence from Brendan, paying tribute to the monks of this lockdown who were martyred there hundreds of years ago. Patrick Kavanagh, may be remembered by his seat in Dublin. Brendan is definitely remembered by more than the gate in, I won't say where, in one of the townlands. But again, you know, more than that. So, on behalf of the family, I'm sure, they would like me to thank everybody for joining them. And particularly was here yesterday, there was people there from, from three o'clock onwards, right up to mass time yesterday evening, come to the church there and paying their respects. And, uh, I'm sure the family are very appreciative of the support I've given. Thanking for the people on the aid camp of the President being with us here this morning, representing so much, for RTE being here with us, and for various media channels. So uh, I'm sure the family themselves are at this stage, you're pretty tired, and uh, going through these days is difficult for you. So please God, let everybody continue to support you in the days ahead as well and pray again that we have committed God, now Brendan, to the care of my almighty God. We ourselves can do so much for one another, 
we, particularly we can pray for one another. When they can pray themselves, we are praying in their stead. So let our prayers then be of great benefit to Brendan and to all the family. Now we complete now, my brothers and sisters, with the post communion prayer and then with the prayers of farewell and commendation. Lord God, your son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey. Mercy to grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Brendan may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death. We now bless the remains with the holy water, remind us of his baptism, and then we'll use the incense then to remind us of his confirmation. Through these two sacraments of initiation, Brendan became, by adoption, a brother to Jesus. Now, accompanying the gestures, we have the words. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive your soul, present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take it to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive your soul, present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive your soul, present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, will commend our brother Brendan in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant. Help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and with you and with our brother forever. In peace then let us take our brother to his place of rest. May the angels lead you into paradise and may the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. And they conclude then with a great promise of the scripture and of the New Testament coming from Jesus himself. I am the resurrection and life, says the Lord, whoever lives and believes in me, shall never die. Amen. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, I will go to the sacristy and be back out in just a moment and they will take the remains, mortal remains to the, to the, to the, um, the cemetery. This locked in for those who don't know, know the place. It's only just about less than a mile away from where we are now. Thanks.
In the name of the Father, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our brother Brendan has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. And we read in sacred scripture, This is the will of my Father, says the Lord, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I shall raise it up on the last day. And so we bless this place of, place of burial. O God, by whose mercy the fatal departed my rest, bless this grave and send your holy angel to watch over it. As we bury here the body of our brother, deliver his soul from every bond of sin, that he may rejoice in you and with your saints forever. Thanks.
in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother Brandon, we commit his body to the ground. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Dear friends, in reverence, let us pray to God, the source of all mercies. You raise the dead to life, give to our brother eternal life, Lord, hear us. Lord, you console the Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us a morning for Brennan, and draw the tears of those who weep, Lord, hear us. Comfort us in our sudden death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation, and eternal life our hope, Lord, hear us. We pray for all who are embedded in the cemetery and who are buried in this grave. May their suffering be lessened, may their joy be increased, and may the light of glory shine on them, and the may they rest in peace, Lord, hear us. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray. Our Nahar, Atar, Nav, Ganefer, Dinam, Kadaga, the Riak, Ganenta, the Holland, Talaf, Marienta, the Nav, Our Naran, Le, who will at two Junin, you've smart to an hour, Vika, Marwahimi, the Rekona Fair, Snalikshinagahu, Axel Shinuwalk, Amen. God of holiness and power, I accept our prayers on behalf of your servant. Do not count his deeds against him, for in his heart he desired to do your will. As his faith united him to your people on earth, so may may your mercy join him to the angels in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We bow our heads and we pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the prayers of Mary, the mother of God, who stood by the cross as her son was dying, help those who mourn for Brendan and accompany always in our time of need. The eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and the perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul, the souls of all the faithful departed, the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. I'll sing a hymn to me. Starlings twist and turn in the sky above my head, while in Liz Lockton Abbey lie the past anticipating dead. Silent generations there that long had bent the knee, endow the Shannon with the grace of reaching to the sea. 
swollen by the rich juice of the dead, the Shannon moves with ease towards a mighty union with Atlantic mysteries. But though the river sweeps beyond each congested bone, its currents do not swirl towards a resurrection any more than starlings do that, fearing death this winter day, create small thunder in the sky and shelter where they may, ignoring green Lislochton where subtle shadows passed through shattered altars, broken walls, the blood of martyrs in the grass. Into the ground that winters well and blossoms soon or late, preserving patient multitudes who are content to wait. Till at last, till they at last disturb the stones, the fox's lair, the starling's nest, to cry out with the howling damned, to wonder with the bless. To hear the word for which they wait, under the coarse grass, the meanest blade of which assists in what must come to pass. To see why silent centuries have finally sufficed, to purge all in the rising flood of the overflowing blood of Christ. Restless at the gate, I turn away, groping towards what can't be said, and I know, I know but little of the birds, the river, and the dead. Rest easy, Brendan. Thank you. As Brendan is now laid to rest here in Los Lockton, as remains are placed in the grave, we can pray a decade of the rosary, the resurrection, for his eternal repose, for all those who lie in this grave and in this graveyard. We also pray for the family themselves, the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. It was the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The eternal rest grant unto my Lord, and perpetual light shine upon him. May you rest in peace. May you soul the soul of all the faithful departed. The mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Father, Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.
anybody who wants to know the clerk can say all right. Begin again to the summoning birds, to the sight of light at the window. Begin to the roar of morning traffic all along Pembroke Road. Every beginning is a promise, born in light and dying in dark. Determination and exaltation of springtime flowering the way to work. Begin to the pageant of queuing girls, the arrogant loneliness of swans in the canal, bridges linking the past and future, old friends passing, though with us still. Begin to the loneliness that cannot end, since it, perhaps, is what makes us begin. Begin to wonder at unknown faces, at crying birds in the sudden rain, at branches stark in the willing sunlight, at seagulls foraging for bread, at couples sharing a sunny secret, alone together while making good. Though we live in a world that dreams of ending, that always seems about to give in, something that will not acknowledge conclusion insists that we forever begin. <laughs>